Hey guys, before we start the show, I want to let you know if you go to John's Arcade Shirt.com, that's right, John's Arcade Shirt.com, you can order your John's Arcade t-shirt. And guys, these things are awesome, and also, this is a great way to support the channel. You have until December 8th, and that's it, they're gone. John's Arcade Shirt.com. All right guys, let's get on with the show. All right, Greg, we're in Chicago. We're in Chicago. Look at this. <laughs> Look where you, yes, and some guy in a sweater. What's going on there? Who is that guy? <laughs> Kick-ass corduroy pants, though. So, 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 guys, we are not in the basement. We're here because Greg and I today are going to visit the Stern Pinball Factory. That's right. I'm excited. We went there last year. We did. Do you think there's new stuff? I think there is going to be new <laughs> so, stuff. So. It's going to be totally different, I bet. You think so? I think so. Like really different? Like what, like new people? Yeah, new stuff? Like maybe, probably like different perspective <laughs> is my guess. So we'll see. I really hope you don't bring a posse. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, <laughs> let's get in a car and drive to Elk Grove, Illinois and visit yeah. the Stern Pinball Factory. So we're going to Stern. So we went there last year. And uh, I don't know what we're going to see. What's new this year? But they just have a tour again. I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. They have the Batman pinball. I'm hoping we can look at that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. That'd be good. And by the way, we have a full car here. It's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. We got, we got Mark, Matt, Nick, Mike. And in the trunk, I don't think this is legal. Um, <laughs> There's an unsecured passenger back there. <laughs> this is like 1970s type like station wagon no, stuff, good, yeah. right? Yeah. We need a pickup truck. With the kid in the back. <laughs> Just all the guys in the back. Of the we should get like a Subaru Brat with the seats in the back. Oh, that'd be awesome. I wanted one of those. Mark, that seems like something you would have had. Do you have a Subaru Brat? I did not. I had, I had like the metal handles. handles. Yeah. Like trash <laughs> So, all right, let's keep going. We're almost at Stern. Uh, Stern's in Elk Grove Village, which is pretty much where we are. We're pretty much there. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, guys, we're at Stern. We're back. We're back. <laughs> this is our 2016, is it a tour? We don't know what we're doing, actually. We don't know what we're doing, <laughs> Stern thing. Yes, all right, let's go in. All right, guys, we're at Stern again, and this is the break room, and we're with Jody, who's the Director of Marketing and Licensing. Greg, you excited? I'm John. excited. <laughs> John's here with his crew. They're from Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to play basketball a little bit. We are. <laughs> so, Jody, the microwaves, that's still happening? Is there yeah, a... it's still happening every day. <laughs> um, you know, when you have to feed like 200 plus people in right. 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need you a lot, a of, lot microwave. of microwaves. <laughs> so, actually, some of what we've been doing recently is there's a couple guys um, that actually heat up everyone's meals before mm -hmm. lunch. So when everybody comes, uh, all their meals are ready. Everybody can enjoy a nice, you know, half hour break because they're working really hard all day. So right, that explains the microwave. Sorry about the Jolly Rancher, but <laughs> it's my breakfast. So right here, these are yeah. So this is like our playtest arcade. So okay. A lot of times, um, you know, we're all required to play pinball every day. Some people play more than others. I uh, some guys play too much. <laughs> but uh, we'll come out here. Some of the games are required play, so like right now we're required to play. Uh, this is our new. Actually, you know what? This, this is kind of neat. Oh, this, this is, is new. This is Spider-Man. The Home Edition. The Home Edition. I don't think anybody's really played too much yet. Is that right? So we haven't started shipping. Tell me yet. about the the color display. So this is our Home Edition. We call it the ELG uh, Spider-Man entry level game. As you can see here, there's no, no coin, coin door, door, so it's on free play. So all you do is. It's, it's no kidding. Itself. And so the speakers, this is the audio right That's here, right? That's the audio right there. So it's a, it's a, as you can see, it's a little smaller footprint than a, than a regular size game. 
Um, is the play field full size? Play field's about the same exact size, though. It is? Yeah, so um, you got actual flippers, you got real pop-up. You wow, have all it, real pinball it, cards, it, drop targets. It feels legit. Yeah, it is legit. That's and awesome. So we did a test of these. I think we built a few we hundred units for the, for the Christmas ball. season. And um, it's a kind of like a test pilot. Right, right. Thing. We'll see how it does, uh, price point wise, stuff like that. I, I do believe it retails for under four thousand dollars. And this is the kind of thing you go to Costco or, and get. Kind Costco of or, or a specialty billiard store. Oh, okay. You know, kind of like a like a game room type of place. Right. And then you talked about the color DMV. Yes, exactly. That's cool too. Um, and its aspect it. ratio is unique too. Yeah, it's just it's something that we created for this game. And we were able to reuse a lot of the animations from the uh, Spider-Man vault that we just did. Okay, and colorize them. Yeah, colorize them. So there's a lot of the same speed. And, uh, so we were able to use a lot of the same. Look, you got a multi-ball. Oh, yeah. Greg, you want to try it? Yeah, try it out. Guys. Get in there. I I love that display though. That's cool. I like the size of it. It's it's pretty cool. It's. Is that color changing LEDs, right? It's not, or is it an actual like LCD? It's color changing LEDs. It is, and that's unique because because a lot of the aftermarket stuff they're like LCD displays, right? Correct. Like a computer monitor, basically. Correct. I like that. It's a good little package. A fun game. It feels totally legit. There's, I don't think there's a lot of compromises. Oh man, I actually, I really like the. The feeling of the rail. Uh huh. You know how sometimes it can be hard on your hands. Right, right. And then you have some of the, some games like you know like the WrestleMania and stuff and X Men. So this is these are just all your games just lined up. Because last time yeah. they were here, there was some old Williams stuff too, wasn't there? Probably. I think there might have been a Kiss game or something like okay. that. Okay. But uh, I don't know where this came from, but I've been playing the hell out. I haven't seen it in a couple of years. <laughs> and it's fun. I, I always forget. We make so many games that I right. always forget. You forgot about X-Men. <laughs> forgot about X-Men, but it's really fun. Oh, uh, the WrestleMania here is out here because we've been doing some code updates to it. Okay. Uh, Kiss. Uh, the team's working on a big code update for Kiss. Right. I know the community has been wanting that. I mean, it's awesome you guys do the code updates. I mean, is there like a threshold where you say we don't support it anymore, or you just... Well, I think it's when the designer feels it's complete. Okay. Um, I know that's subjective. Yes. Yeah. But I think it's when... It's kind of like a movie director, right? This is my version of it. Right. This is uh, my my, uh, my co composition. And so that's, that's kind of when we want to do it. Right, right. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes timelines get in the way of... Right. Doing it I imagine people ways. want to move on with their life and not keep going back, right? Well, uh, you'd be surprised. I think Lyman would want to work on Metallica for R really forever. I think he's still <laughs> working on it. Actually. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, he loves this game. Um, this is a fun game. Though. I have this one at my home too. So this is the, again. So this is the area kind of where we just kind of hang out, play games, test games, uh, make sure things like so over here. Like you can see, like we use this game to test some mods. Which one? Uh, I think this Ghostbusters. Oh, one. with the slime on the top. Yeah. yeah. What's this? That's uh, like I think that's part of a, a ghost trap mod that Mezzle Mods is working on. Yeah, I saw that you guys announced a, is a 3D printed. Uh, which one is it? The, the oh, Firehouse. Firehouse. So yeah, what we're gonna do is in a, in a few weeks we'll have for sale. It's kind of, we're calling it the Ghostbusters Mezzle Bundle, mm -hmm. and it'll come with a bunch of stuff. It'll come with the Firehouse. It'll come with the Ghost Trap. It'll come with that. Uh, like uh, there's a PKE. And it's all 3D printed, right? Some of them are 3D printed. I think some of them are sculpted. I'm not exactly sure, but okay. Uh, but yeah, the, those two for sure are 3D printed. And um, yeah, Mezzle does some really cool stuff. We did a prison tower with them for our Walking Dead and it, it still sells to this day. And you're, you'll be selling that in the Stern shop? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Here's some old, uh, there, there's some we're running out stuff. of room because we we're, we're yeah. so busy, the play fields are taking over. So like, here's the So this room. Data, Data East Laser War game. Yeah, it's not on, for, unfortunately. Right. Um, we moved into this building. I, uh, I went and bought one of these from a I think Mike uh, Mike Pasak, who does the Chicago Pinball Expo, mm -hmm. was uh, ha tracked this down for me, and I thought it was just cool to have. This is the first game that we've ever made. Okay. So in yeah. 1986, when when Joe Camico and Gary Stern started this company, uh, this is it. This is the first game, and and there's some. I gotta find for you. Maybe I can find it for you to put on your show. But there's like video or pictures from this photo shoot. Oh really? This was an actual <laughs> photo shoot of, of like people in leotards. That's awesome. Like kind of flash like Gordon Gary on the couch looking at the people <laughs> in the leotards, right? And and the 20s too is like when I bought the game, 
I'm, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. So I thought it was about space, right? Like yeah. Laser war, right? So it's like the Star Wars ripoff, right? It's about laser tag. Is that right? Yeah. But they all look like they're like from Flash they Gordon do or kind something. Of like Flash Gordon, but it, it's about laser tag, and if you remember 1986, laser I do. tag was huge. Remember the place by uh, the racetrack over there? There yep. was a big. Uh, Mm-hmm. There was a big laser tag place everywhere, all across <laughs> right. the country. I mean, I remember going to visit uh, some friends and, and uh, going to laser tag. I had a laser tag birthday in the fifth grade, so, <laughs> so laser tag was big. Makes a lot of sense that they did a laser tag game, but that, that's the first game we ever did. Uh, here's an old black Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. I think this was out here when we were doing the Vault Edition. We were okay, just for a- reference, a- being it. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times when we run something down the line that we haven't done before or done in a long time. It's it's nice to have one out here for the for the manufacturing people to say, hey, uh, oh, this is what we did. This is how we did it. Gotcha. You know? uh, so it looks like here, the assembly lines here. The Walking we can come, Dead. We can yep. come back over here, but it looks like they're running Walking Dead now. Uh, that's the zombie gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> TV show's still hot. Uh, over here at the station, this is Tyler here. Tyler, say hi to John's arcade. Hey, how you doing, man? And Arcade Impossible. <laughs> and uh, Ghostbusters. So show them what you're doing here, Tyler. We're looking at play fields. We're looking for imperfections, right? Okay. So we're this looking, is kind of QC right now. Yeah, so this is a light table. Mm. So he can flip it on. You want to flip it on real quick? Sorry. Are these measures you've taken to, uh, with the ghosting issues? Actually, we've always done that. Okay. You know, there were some ghosting issues this summer with a lot of the Ghostbusters playfields. And what was unfortunate about those ghosting issues is that they were occurring after we would ship the games. Right. You know, we weren't catching them here. I think we've I think we've nailed down the solution. I think you know stuff, stuff's looking pretty good now. Yeah. But unfortunately it was something that you couldn't see here until uh, until you know until things changed. Mm-hmm. I've got a late September premium. It looks good still. It does look good? So. Alright. You let us know if it does not look bad. We'll take care of it. Absolutely. The um, so 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 he's looking for you know sometimes there's scratched inserts, sometimes there's dirty inserts, sometimes all sorts of stuff. So he's looking at all those sorts of things. If he sees something that's not correct, he's gonna put it. He's gonna mark it. Whatever's wrong with it, that'll either he might either get scrapped, he might get screen printed over, mm-hmm. they might just try to repair that section. Uh, but again, we want this part to be perfect because when it gets down the line, once we put a bunch of parts on it. You know, we've right. invested a lot of time and money. We don't want to come back, and especially don't want it to get to your place. So uh, this is screen printing, though, right? I mean, this is traditional this is screen traditional printing, screen printing with right the CMYK now. marks and all that. Yes, it's exactly, still... and that's that's for the color reference. Right. right yeah. So it's still it's still a traditional screen printing process. Is it is it screened by hand or is it automated now? It's by hand. It is by it's hand. The guy who does it by hand. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, it, so, it just again, looks amazing. You'll see as you go through the factory, mm-hmm. and you've been here before. Yeah. Everything's done by hand. Right. Um, kind of why pinball machines cost them like a car. <laughs> uh, everything's hand built. No robot. There's here. a lot of pieces and parts. Although we could Westworld this place and make all <laughs> robots. Alright, so let's see. Thanks, Tyler. So, you know, pinball has a lot of parts. You guys have probably heard Gary say it's got 3,500 parts, a lot of wire. This is the parts this room. This is the parts room here for uh, for the assembly line. And so we're probably currently running, I think, eight or nine different titles. No kidding. Uh, and as you know, they do. A, they come in different configurations: good, better, best, pro, premium, LE. So it's a lot of stuff to keep sorted. Um, there's about five or six guys that work in purchasing, mm-hmm. making sure th- things are coming in at a certain time. Doesn't help if you have uh, three thousand parts when you need three thirty-five hundred, right? <laughs> you can't run the assembly line. If you guys notice, also. These stickers here, they yep. say Rojas compliant. Yep. That's on every box. That's because none of our components uh, have lead. I see. Um, we export 50% of our games outside of the country. So that's really important, especially, you know, uh, sending stuff to Europe. Can't have lead, so we uniform everything, makes it simple. It, are all the parts made in the U.S., or are you, are you going overseas for some uh, of the stuff? A lot of parts are made in the U.S., and some some of the parts come from overseas. But um, a lot of our... Su- the bulk of our suppliers are in Chicago. Right. And that's why we're Even in the Chicago. injection molding, all that's in the... In, in uh, actually, those are that's done in New York, actually. Oh, it is? Yeah. But, but it's all in the States. All in the States. So, but, you know, like uh, our, our decal vendors, yep. a lot of the people who, who uh, stamp and press metal for us, um, a lot of that all comes from Chicago. And that's one of the reasons we stay here in Chicago is that... What's that? Uh, that looks like the front decal for a... Go- this is a test. It's a front decal. Oh, for the, for the coin dart. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize the art. So, yeah. Because I don't Let's have the premium. Let's open up another box. And see what <laughs> what's, what's this? All right. 
<laughs> what are these? What game are these going? Oh, yeah, those I are screws. These are screws. <laughs> so a lot of those 3,500 parts are probably screws and bolts and stuff like that. But as you know, you guys are pinball guys. Each game's uniquely different, right? Right. So it's 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 we're reinventing the wheel. You guys wouldn't take the same game over and over. Right. The but obviously there's a lot of commonality with some of the parts, right? Some of them are yeah. yeah. Exactly. We try not to put new flippers on every. Right. Time. You're not going to re yeah. reinvent the wheel every time. Right. Hey guys. Hi. So here's some empty cabinets. Empty cabinets. So this is like kind of in, this is like the back. This is the rear, the back door of the place. Uh, this is where the wood comes in. The wood comes <laughs> in. This is where and the, the car comes out the other side. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> all the parts come in here. They're staged for order. And then we'll go into what's called incoming inspection. So these are ramps that came yep. in from, mm -hmm. let's see where they came from, Northern Precision Plastics, I which see. I know is a local company. It's the vacuum forming. Vacuum form ramps. I don't let's, I don't know if we can guess what game this is. Nothing? Mm. Nothing. Pulls around. Uh, wow, that's a big ramp. Maybe it's for the, uh, maybe it's for the DLG. I don't know what this is for. See, that's why they pay me to stay in the front. <laughs> All right, so we'll go this way. Okay. This is incoming inspection here, so um, here's kind of a, they decorated nice, it's kind of like a visual history of our past 16, 17 years. Mostly Stern stuff up here, but you can see there's a couple Sega ones, I see Starship Troopers, uh, I see Jurassic Park over here, Space Jam with Sega. Um, so mostly licensed titles. All sorts of fun stuff. That you can see here against the wall. Fire and blood. Of, bunch of armor. That's yeah. The rainbow package. That's the custom rainbow. Fire and blood. Uh, no one's ordered one yet. Is that right? No. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of cool like custom like side, side rail, like the ACDC, the like yep. laser cut. So sometimes like we'll send the designers out here. They'll be like, oh, we we have this color in stock, or we have mm. we've used this before. You see there, there's a bunch of motors on the wall, right? Right. right. It's always cool to reuse stuff because then it, it reduces your R and D costs. Exactly. And then you can put more into the game. Right. We've done that before, but where mm. is it? It's right there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. No, see now we're delaying someone's <laughs> game getting to them because we're in the way. <laughs> Hi guys. So here, the most important part of this department, What's the inspection up? department, is inspecting, right? He's checking the tolerance. Uh, yep. Make sure it's inspected. What is yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plunger so link. Plunger, plunger link. Yeah. Okay. You guys, you guys seen one of these before? Oh, yeah. So he's miking it to make sure. Making sure yeah. everything works. Because yeah, imagine yeah. if the hole was the wrong yeah, size. Right, 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 right. And then it gets to your house, and you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, man, Stern sucks. This flipper is terrible. This flipper is terrible. Look at that. So he's got his drawing to compare it to. Right, right. Uh, this was designed here in mm -hmm. R&D. It again, gets sent out to a manufacturer, yep. comes back like this. Mm -hmm. Do you have a bad one? No, no so bad far, ones? So They're all good? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so far, all right. Well, what's over here? What do we got over here? So, um, the wing uh, chassis weldment. But I will take uh, this part is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they need a uh, paint. It's bad paint. It's bad paint? Mm -hmm. Okay, you see that, John? Yeah. So it's bad paint. So it doesn't look so good. Is it brown? I don't know what color. It's just different than the other. It's just different than the other sides here. So he's going to reject that. It'll go back to the manufacturer. Um, you guys see behind you, you see all those pink labels, reject? Yeah, the reject pile. Yeah, so we're going to send those back. <laughs> Hopefully we get new parts back. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Hopefully we get new parts back, and, or, and we'll get a, or we'll get a credit from the vendor. Everything will be good. Um, but what's pretty good, you know, the reject pile is pretty small compared to the stuff that made it into the cage. So not so bad. Not so bad. Now. So here's uh, metallic. So the, the cabinets are all the same, pretty much. They're Just all the pretty decals much the same, change. Yeah, we decal them over here in the corner mm -hmm. here. Um, hey, George. Oh, guys, look, it's a real life oh. designer. <laughs> this is George. Hi, George. See you again. Guys, yes, you too. You guys, I think, got a tour from George last We did. Time. We were blessed. Guys, yeah. you're so back. We are. Yeah. Awesome. They're back, awesome. and uh, they got the low budget version of you. They got me. <laughs> and, uh, All good. All good. We'll have fun. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Bye. So, uh, did George show you the wiring harness section? He did. Yeah. Let's go check that out. So, Medieval Madness, you guys were contracted out to do this, right, for yeah, Chicago Illinois, gaming, for Chicago Gaming? Uh, um, it's their own hardware, right? Their right. own system, everything yeah. like that. So, the only thing that we do is uh, assembly put it together. Yeah. So whenever they're ready. Do they share a lot of the parts that you do, like the, the generic well, stuff? Like, unfortunately, not a lot of Like the coils stuff. and stuff? Or? Unfortunately, a lot it's of all stuff is, is unique. So it's, really? Um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to, to unify that process. Um, so here's where the wiring harness is. So it's all done by hand. All done by hand. 
Um, and so you guys, you guys are familiar with our our systems. We have Sam system and mm -hmm. we have the Spike system. Right. So uh, what's cool is, hi guys. Uh, <laughs> like, it's a people aquarium, right? Um, and uh, what was I saying? Spike Sam. Oh yeah. yeah. So we still have games that are very popular that are on the Sam system. So we're still, so you can see that's probably a Sam. This looks huge. It's okay. Sam, right? So what is this? So the spike's a little more condensed. The, the yeah. The Actually, amount of wiring. This is for Can Crusher. This is oh okay. The PBR game. Mm. Um, so that game is actually done really well for PBR. They're having, I don't know if you guys saw it's this. It's super start, cool, yeah. It's really cool looking. They're starting to have events around it. Uh, it's actual Paps Blue Ribbon Pinball Tournament, uh, which is cool. You guys see behind you, Shark, that's Batman. So they're, uh, they're doing a bunch of little little harnesses for Batman here. Right. Oh, that's cool. A little automatic uh, wire tie. I need one of those. I need one too. <laughs> For my kids. <laughs> right. Zip, Zip strip their uh, wrists. Yep. <laughs> oh, this is uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones for something here. You guys notice here, see all the uh, instructions are in Spanish. Mm. A lot of Spanish speaking employees. Right. It makes things move uh, rather rather smooth. Right. Um, but this is nothing. You see all the hand labor gets done over here. Hey guys. How are you? It's almost turkey day. Babo? See? Almost. Almost. So they're, are they putting the connectors on? Yeah, they're putting Molex connectors mm -hmm. on over here. So you can see the wires The wires just don't come like that, right? Right, they so, gotta do all the crimps. Yeah, so as, as she's going through, she's sorting her wires. You can see as she puts it in there one yeah. time. She's got a foot pedal Look down at that. There. Some, a lot of you guys may have to, maybe done this with a hand tool. Yeah, exactly. Um, Too many times. Yeah. I need one of these machines. Exactly. Well, you, <laughs> you got to get the DeLorean from Back to the Future to find. Oh, these. is that right? I don't know. They look from like the eighties. Like, I don't know. They look older than that, but but they still work really well. And and uh, you could still get the, the, the yep. parts and all so that. The, yeah. Well, it's, it's like big Rambo reel, right? Right. Right. And uh, and so they're doing this. That gets it ready. Prepared for these guys over here. Oh, so, a lot of tedious work here. <laughs> so he's uh, again, you know, someone's got to put that in there. There's no right, ro right. No robot. So all the crimps are done over there, and oh, then they have to put them in the uh, in the housing. Oh. Yep. Then we have our testing stations over here. You can see. So they'll take these, hi guys. They'll take these. We've got a custom jig here. This one looks like it's for Metallica. And this yeah. is the test of harness? Yeah, or, or this little, yeah, this little thing. So she's, she jumps in here. She's looking on her screen here. I see. Just to make sure all the crimps are good and Make sure everything's continuity. good, there's signal going through here. Yeah. Like if this, if this isn't working and it gets to the, and to they're the like, assembly line. Why is it not working? Why is it not working? <laughs> the assembly line stops. We're, right. You know, we're and not it's just that they could have caught it here. They could have caught it here. So if this is bad, sometimes they'll fix it here mm. or sometimes they'll kick it back to that department. So you can kind of consider the, the wiring place as almost like a little factory that's servicing this factory. And so once everything is, is done and prepped and tested over the next day. That's really cool. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then everything's ready for manufacturing, right? So these will all become pinball machines. You got Metallica, you got Walking Dead. So with the new system, are you minimizing the like the amount of wiring? It, it, it goes down. It does? Yeah, it goes down a little bit, but there's still a good amount of wiring. Like pieces. the node boards, like on Ghostbusters, was, was that like to minimize that kind of stuff? Or? Yeah, well, what it does is, is, is so now, the way the SAM system worked is mm -hmm. a, was relay cables, right? Okay. So you had a big cable for your coils yeah you had a big one for your uh lights mm -hmm. and you had a big one what else we got switches okay. okay so you had three main things that were happening now the node boards um are like little computers and the node boards can do a, a certain amount of features so each node board can control a certain amount of lights a certain amount of coils okay and a certain amount of switches so based on how many switches and lights the designer wants that's how many no he's got to get all right i need this many no boards he's going to work with the electrical engineers to say you're crazy or not or right. you can afford this or not yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh and so what's happening now is and you have a ghostbusters yes i do yeah so what you notice is 
those all those no boards, there's, there's no soldering onto the no board. Everything's those block connectors and mm -hmm. the RJ45 yeah. connectors. So we did that for serviceability. So in case you have a problem with the board in your game, it's going to be related to a no board. Those are very easy to replace. And I see. A guy like me who has no electronic right, knowledge right. can so go So it just kind of simplifies everything. Simplifies everything. It's easier to troubleshoot. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what's happening. So you're losing a little bit of cable. You're gaining more circuit boards. Uh, but that's kind of that was kind of the principle behind it was to uh, to streamline it, make it more modern, uh, and to make it look nicer. It looks it looks a lot cleaner. It does. Um, you know, as more people are getting into pinball. Um, we want more people to get in pinball, casual people to get in pinball. But one thing that scares people is when they look under the hood, yeah. right? They see the spaghetti dinner on the <laughs> right. yeah. I don't want to mess with that, right? And they, so if it looks like the inside of our Samsung TV or if it looks like the inside of our refrigerator. Yeah, it's that's intimidating. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, so we want to build that consumer confidence. So, so that's, that's a big part of the spike system. And it allows us to do lots of cool stuff with the display and we're going to be online and all sorts of cool things. You're asking about the cabinets. Yeah. Uh, here they are. So they come in like this. And they're just kind of smoothing yeah, it out this here. Is like the body shop, right? Right, so right. I, I got to bring my car in here. I have a couple of <laughs> So they come through with a little bit of body filler. Yeah, and, and actual a Bondo. Right, right. Make it nice oh, and smooth, right? <laughs> uh, make it nice and smooth. And then when they're ready, we can decal it to whatever game we want. So this is this is cool because we're not stuck with a bunch of screen printed cabinets that we may or may not use. Yes. So it helps us plan for manufacturing. So everything you see decal back there will become a game. If there's an order for it. We don't do inventory. Um, we only build to order. Right, right. So everything you see here will become a game. So it's already like, sold. It's already sold. So you see a bunch of Metallica, mm -hmm. a ton of Ghostbusters premium. Ghostbusters has done phenomenal this year. And George was telling me last year, I mean, you guys will go back to the well as many times as you need to if there's demand, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, so like uh, Metallica, like, we just renewed the license. Right. Right. Um, uh, so it's so like five years from now, if people still want Ghostbusters and, and demands there, you'll if Sony wants to right, and you, you have the license still. Yeah, absolutely. I right, mean, why not? Right, it's kind of like uh, you know I come from the guitar business, right? Mm -hmm. And Fender's been selling the Stratocaster for right. decades, right? We and so I kind of did you work at, for Fender? No, but uh, <laughs> uh, but I had a lot of buddies who did. And, yeah. Uh, the cool thing about the Stratocaster is there's the only thing they're reinventing is maybe the the trim or the hardware or right. or the color. Right, but the basic design and thing is cool. So, kind of look at Meta games like Metallica and mm -hmm. ACDC and, and stuff like that. They, they, they're like, there's there are Stratocasters. Right, right, right exactly. And so it, hopefully we can make them forever. Um, so we'll go we, once the cabinets. Thanks, guys. Once the cabinets are done here, they'll get stationed for manufacturing. Right. Now we're kind of in no man's land. That's the worst. Yeah. Ever. Um, and so George told us last year. So you guys went to all metal head and everything. All metal back box here. So and the power supplies back here. Yep. So if you guys want to look, look in actually, here. this will be the older system, right? So yeah, this is a, a Metallica, so it's more of a, but it does have a new back box style. So yeah. So again, looking at a Sam kind of a hybrid, a Sam system game, mm -hmm. right? Got you still have your power transformer. Yep. You still have your big relay cables going down the cat. You, you still have uh, multiple circuit boards in the back, and you're gonna have. Uh, and you're gonna have, uh, and you're gonna have a uh, fluorescent light. Uh, right, 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 right. Spike system. So these games are what we call whip, work in progress. Mm -hmm. So they're waiting for something. So these are these are waiting for play fields, right? Uh, I'm sorry, guys. You guys. Oh, sorry, Jim. Uh oh, this one came to the pinball doctor here. <laughs> that one's back for rebirth. What's wrong with it? Um, you guys, remember I mentioned we ship all over the world. If you take a peek in here and you see these tags, that one's going to France, England, Italy. So, Italy. is there anything significant you need to do, like to power and all that yeah, when it goes so somewhere else? Yeah, so uh, these will be these will be a two twenty volt right. Right, for Europe. Um, and then our games, we prevent our games from working from country to country. Like so, a United States game yeah. won't work in Europe. How do, how do you prevent that? Uh, just the, the system and that, that way it keeps bootlegging from happening because we have distributors in every country. Really? We, want them, you know, uh, we don't want people ship, shipping games from Italy to the United States or United States. It's the same kind of thing. No so, kidding. Yeah, so so they're like they're on 220 you know, down in Australia. But can you con convert it to 110? And You can convert it. There's kits to convert it but we yeah. just don't allow it to be done. I see. Uh, uh, through our system. So this is Chicago Gaming's it's all just their deal. They designed it and gave you the parts and said put yeah, it together. Yeah, so this is this is the inside of a medieval madness. And yeah. You can see it's much much different than what we do. Right. Here. Power um, supplies down there. Look yeah. at that big fuse block. It's a much different uh, different system. Um, and you know, like you were asking about coil again, different coils, stuff like that. Some of the stuff that might be in common might be. So they're sourcing. Tina, this. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> so they're sourcing their own parts and, and they source it. everything. Yeah. They do their own QC, kind of like what we saw there. 
they deliver the parts all ready to be, to be assembled. Mm-hmm. We'll assemble, and then they have a they have a guy here that works as a like a, t- a tester. For gotcha. Them. And their driver boards. Look at that. Well, it's, it's more of a more complex system, but yeah. more robust. Uh, again, so you were asking about the spike system. Yeah. The spike system gets much more simpler in the back box. Um, you just have the one circuit board. Right. Um, you have no more fluorescent tube. It's all lit by LEDs. Which just blows my mind. That, that, cool. that those LEDs light They're that whole back bright, glass. Right? <laughs> yeah, and, and then we have a thing, too, when you're working on it so it doesn't blind you. Probably yeah. Done that too. And then, no, I didn't know that. What do you mean? Oh, well, I'll show you when okay. we're, I'll show you when we're testing. John probably has, can't see when he's working on <laughs> um, the and You also have the power supply back there, which right. is a digital power supply. So we've gotten rid of the, the heavy, heavy transformer in the cabinet. Now the digital power supply. As a result of that, our new power switch is, is under, the, right there. under the hood. Right yeah. there. So again, these are, I don't know what's going on. These, these might be refurbs or sometimes what happens is, unfortunately, a game might get all the way through the factory and then somebody say, you know what, this can't be shipped. Something's wrong with it. Mm. They'll kick it back to this line. And this, and then, so these guys are that. Let's go. You guys want to want to go see the sub assembly? Sure. Look at this. It's just crazy to me that this stuff actually works. There's like so much right? to buy. Like, yeah, I can't believe it. Like after all, after all said and done, somebody plugs it in. The, like right. It's like wood shop. I couldn't make my lamp turn on. Right. Right. Oh, I mean, oh. it really is complicated. All this stuff. Did you bring my coffee? I didn't bring your coffee today, but I will bring your coffee tomorrow. I promise. Wow. All right. So. Um, this is kind of my favorite part of the assembly process. This is a sub-assembly process. So if you ever had to build a pinball machine all at one time, it would take you a few weeks. There's yeah. a lot of little things to do. So the sub-assemblies help us streamline things. So um, here you can see sub-assemblies for Medieval Madness. Um, let's see if we can find some stern stuff over here. Um, so here's some, something as simple as as an apron, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a sub-assembly. It doesn't look like much, but right. somebody, somebody had to put the stickers on it, exactly. right? Exactly. And then so now... As, as the game goes by, they can just pull this from the shelf here. It's and it's ready, ready to go. Ready to go. Now a more complex sub-assembly might be... Let's see here. I'm going to break that. They're not going to let me back in. Uh, <laughs> but over here, you can see there's some uh, there's a person who cuts the decals out. Right? Oh, wow. It comes in a giant sheet. Yeah. She needs to cut the decals out to make sure it goes on to the next step. Not a very complex, complex thing. But well, the same thing here you see behind us. We have the... Uh, Plastics, right? Plastics come in a big giant sheet, and uh, and they're just organized. Those are cool. What are these? It's PBR stuff. Whoa! Look at that. Who wants a beer? <laughs> <laughs> so you get this is a little thing. If you have extra room on the sheet, you always throw little yeah, goodies on there, right? Exactly. Anybody want a beer? <laughs> sure. Have a beer. Here, Mark. All right. This is cool. cool. It's totally cool. These are cool. You should take those. <laughs> I'll send you a bunch for your, uh, for your show to give away. <laughs> Anybody else want beer? Sure. All right. So you guys always do this, though. There's, if there's room in the sheet, you throw a keychain on there or yeah, some little try, fun try stuff. Yeah, we try to do something. You know, John yeah. Trudeau does some cool... He did something cool with his Ghostbusters. He made a little stand for it. I think yeah, Can, I, yeah, that was totally cool. I think Can Crusher comes with, a, like, a, a cutout of the van. Yeah. And it sits up on a and thing. A little standy, yeah. And kinda, you know, it's kind of fun. Something to do. Uh, here's the soap assembly for Spider-Man, right? So now we're getting more complicated than just cutting out decals. Now we're building stuff. So this has, you know, one of our molded toys. Mm-hmm. It's got some of our butyrate on there. Um, it's got some of the decals. It's got a ramp flap. And most importantly, it's got this... Uh, um, okay, so here's, here's something that gets even more complicated. The snake for Metallica. Wow. Right? And uh, I'm going to break it and they're going to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> so you got, all right. I wasn't here. <laughs> Don't show this Just video. Just blame me. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, um, you know, you guys played Metallica before. The jaw goes down, snake ball goes in there. Kicker, and then it kicks kick, it out. Kicks it out like that. Um, you know, so this is a culmination of, of wiring harnesses that we made. It's also uh, part of our some coils, some of our stamp metal pieces, and then some of our sculpted pieces all coming together. Right. To make a sub assembly. Can you imagine if you sat on your game and you built this whole thing all at once? Exactly. You might be there for a week just building this. <laughs> So it, this makes makes assembly going much smoother. Let's see. There's a little test fixture. Counting all the sub assemblies to make sure there's enough drawn. Exactly. There, these tally up how many. No, most most there's there's a manager that'll come by. So there's there's someone like, so like in that room that we were in before, right? There's a guy who come, there's there, there's orders placed for the different place. So we're in working cell. Where are we? We're in working cell 25. Mm. So there might be a pick ticket for working cell 25, and that might have. 
it'll be in these boxes here, right? Or, or over here, and it'll have all the parts to build this. Mm -hmm. And then once they're all built, um, and, and, you know, another guy, another guy comes by and makes sure everything's good. And then you can see over here. Is this an old Sega fixture? Um, it probably was at one point. Now I think it's turned into a, it's just a custom kind of test fixture mm, for us. I see. And so you see what she's doing there. You see what she's got there? That's the Game of Thrones ramp. And she's just testing to make sure she's all the switches, switches are working, yeah. right? So we've set up this old testing system just for this purpose uh, right now. We'll also use it for a bunch of other things. Right, too, right. But right now she's making sure that all the switches work on Game of Thrones ramps. And then that subassembly yeah. passes QC and... Exactly. Subassembly passes QC. And now it's ready for now it's dropping. Gonna, it's going to put it on this shelf probably over here and it'll go on the assembly line. So Very a lot efficient. of checks and balances. Yeah. Oh, here's another Metallica thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, nice. Sparky, right? Yeah. That thing is great. It is cool. So this was interesting too. This started out as a drawing from Donnie. Then a sculptor made it into a thing. And then we had to figure out how to how to best make him move around. So his, you know, his torso moves back and forth. There's a little tiny coil back there. That oh, that's it, awesome. Makes it go like that. <laughs> and, you know. That's very cool. And I heard a cool story about this character. I guess he was originally Donnie had drawn, drawn him on the wall in Metallica's headquarters somewhere. Oh, is that like, right? Like that, like something like that. <laughs> and, and so, so that's where he got the idea to put him in the game. By the way, guys, you got to pick up Donnie's new art book. It's really cool. It has a lot of cool stuff in it. Yeah, I heard it has something in it, maybe. It does have something in it. If you want to look at it, we can look at it. Really? Yeah, I got a bunch of copies here. Um, so you guys remember our wire? All right. So this was delivered here. So it looks like over there they're building Ghostbusters premiums. So when we come back around the line, we'll see We'll see what they're doing over there. Um, oh yeah, and so forth and so forth. It's a lot of sub-assemblies. We'll also, here's the sub-assembly area. Look at um, Sonya's building toppers, right? So toppers are kind of just a like walking a walking dead some, topper, some, yeah. Yeah, walking dead topper. So this was actually the first topper we've ever made, and uh, it's the best-selling topper we've ever made. Is that right? It still sells. No uh, kidding. Well, you know, as you can see, How we're, still, make, we're this? still making walking dead games. It's kind of like, you know, uh, people buy rims for the cars that they ha that yeah. are out, right? You know. So do you guys update the walking dead code to match what's happening in the show at all? Not. No, not you gotta not do the baseball bat thing. Not on that. I know, right? That would be fun. <laughs> Sometimes we do stuff like that where, right. where we'll update a game uh, to be more current. You know, uh, I got a call from the guy who's doing the new Star Trek or did the new Star Trek movie, Justin Lin. Uh huh. He's a big pinball fan. He's yeah. Like, hey, how do we update the Star Trek game to have this scene to, or whatever? Yeah, yeah. To, to have stuff for my new movie. I'm like, <laughs> we don't, but that'd be awesome. <laughs> right. You know? but, but maybe we do. But uh, anyway, what is the what does the topper do uh, for the Walking uh, Dead? Walking. It's been a long time since I played, but I believe what it does is so there's um. There's a fish tank mode in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're collecting heads. I believe in the premium in LE, there's actually a little miniature fish tank. And as you collect the heads, they light up. So like that. So this is kind of mimicking that. I it's see. It's like a scorecard for that. Gotcha. Uh, it also does really cool attract mode and stuff when it's sitting in your basement, your arcade. And it just kind of follows the fish tank rules in there. So basically, what we want the toppers to do is a multiple two to things. We want the toppers to draw people in to play them on location. Um, we want them to be informative. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one topper that's really informative is the Game of Thrones topper. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's a big dragon on top of a castle, and all of the crests from the playfield are up there too. Oh. So you can see, if you see you can somebody, see that. Yeah. One yeah. time I watched Lyman play Game of Thrones, and all the shields were lit on the topper. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> you know. So it's kind of it's kind of a neat type of thing like that. Kiss uh, does lots of cool light shows. The Ghostbusters topper is really cool. It's got the, every time that go yeah. on. What's that? Oh yeah, she's testing the topper here. Yeah. Will it turn on? Will it light up, Sonia? <laughs> Sonia loves being on camera, by the way. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> she told me she wants to take this place and be a movie star. Oh, look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh, wow, very cool. Yeah, so I, I, th I think it's probably just running through a little light show here. But, um... Yeah, it's creepy, right? It's grotesque. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the green light is really cool because it, I don't know if you guys remember that that era of the show when he had the fish tanks. Everything was all green and hazy. And it's, it's like, how do you make a scuzzy? They're like, well, at first the designers were crazy. They're like, well, how do we get water in yeah. you know, like our, And they were thinking about like, we were all bringing in like our things from our kids. Like we all have these like, Water we all have kids. Yeah. You know, like there's like this thing, like those cups with yeah, liquid yeah. on the outside. Yes. And we're like, how do they do that? <laughs> and then someone's like, you're not putting water on top of a pinball machine. <laughs> um, that would have been awesome, actually. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same reason we can't do a big smoke machine. You know, the condensation. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, I've talked Steve Ritchie out of it a bunch, bunch of times. 
But yeah, so that's basically what she does. So she's testing it, making sure it works. Then it works. She'll put it in a box. It'll go to part sales, and hopefully it goes to somebody's uh, somebody's house or somebody's arcade. Thank you, Sonia. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're seeing some good stuff today. We, we're seeing some great stuff. <laughs> I want to make sure we're seeing good stuff. We're not. I'll, I'll, I'll do a dance. Oh, your score reels for PBR? Well, this is, okay, so this is my favorite mechanism that we've made in a long time. It's really boring, right? I know, but it's so, but it's so cool. Right. Right? <laughs> So, so you had to reinvent the EM mechanism. Yeah, to reinvent it because right. you know Wonelli was originally based on an old some Continental Cafe, maybe. I okay. can't remember the old game it was. But anyway, had scoring reels on it, the old drum scoring reels. Yeah. Like that. So to go find that all that stuff is really hard. To even build it the same way is kind of not smart. Right. So what George and his team did is they re-engineered the scoring reel to be state of the art. And um, if you've seen them work on the game, they're, they they. They look so nice that they almost look like a digital screen. Right. They, they move so smooth. But um, I really think this is a really just a cool thing. It's re it's very pinball. Mm -hmm. um, it's very traditional, and I, I love that we're able to use it on more games than just Monelli. We're able to, you know. So what's in here? Is that a, a little electric motor? Now he's asking me. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an electric motor and some LEDs. What is is that? <laughs> yeah, there's there's motors in there exactly. <laughs> they're little servo motors, right? And they're spinning them around and right, right. circuit boards telling them what to do and stuff well, like that. Well, it's cool because the, the old EM it would have been just like a coil that is advancing the mechanism. Exactly, and it's just very expensive, right? Right. You imagine how many coils it would take to do it. So this is cool. Um, Really, I, again, I love it. I think it's neat, and I'm really glad we get to use it again on PBR, and I hope we get to make more games. I was gonna like say, that. are you guys gonna do other kind of throwback things? I hope so. You know, if demand happens. Uh, zombies over here. <laughs> so I'm sure George showed you the press last time. Yeah, with the uh, for the whole the dimples. dimples and, yeah. yeah, we don't need to stop by there, but you can see that they're running. They're running a um, lot of Walking Dead right now. It's always good for the holidays. Hey, how are you doing? So Armando's putting on uh, some Mylar, right? Mm -hmm. so, okay. So there's parts in the game, oftentimes, that we know are going to have higher ball traffic than others. Uh, one, one part in particular is usually around the pop bumpers. Mm -hmm. um, you're also going to find um, outside of scoops and mm. uh, things mm -hmm. that kick the ball out. Right. Um, so what we do is we'll put Mylar on certain areas uh, to prevent the wear. So you can see here, if you... You can kind of I see, see it, it. so yeah, it's right can, there. Yeah, it's hard to see if you don't, yeah. yeah, but then you can see it. It's a clear decal. We don't want to interrupt the art artwork or anything. Right, so it's pretty much invisible. And it's not an easy thing to do good, right? Because if I did it, I'd have hair and fingerprints all over it. <laughs> That's why we make Armando shave every day. How'd the bears do yesterday? Lost to my giants. <laughs> so he's prepping it here. They'll put it in a bunch of that hardware, kind of, mm -hmm. kind of the, the common part. Yes, about the common parts. These yeah. are probably more common, right? Right. Put all that stuff together. And now the play fields are staged for the assembly line. So you can see we got a bunch of stuff staged for assembly line. We got Game of Thrones. Here's a bunch of PBR games that are ready. To oh, go. cool. Let's look at the PBR. I just love that art. Yeah. We stand on our heads. It'll look <laughs> so this is a pin that you have to go directly to them to get, right? To PBR. Yeah. Is so that PBR, true? Um, I don't know if they have any more available on their website, but mm -hmm. they, they were selling them on their website. They did do, um, a lot of their reps have them for promotions and stuff like that. Um, they're starting to show up and like, we saw one show up at a liquor store the other day. Oh, is that right? Yeah, with, with a ton of PBR around it. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's I think it's gonna be cool. Um, is it literally a reskin of Wonelli? Is so every literally a reskin, it's just, it's got- New all, call outs and new rules. New call outs, new music. Uh -huh. um, rules are kind of the same yeah. because it's, this is a real simple game. Yeah. So so we kept the scoring kind of the same, you know. There is no modes in Wonelli, right? It's right, not, right. It's, not, it's not, like a, not like a Lord of the Rings thing where you're, you're, you're trying to fight. The art is just killer. The art is fun. Donnie did a really good job. You know, I, when PBR uh, approached me, I said, if you really want to make something truly authentic, I think you need to do something hand-drawn. And if you really want to do something really cool, there's this guy that's hotter than... Yeah, you know, hotter than bacon grease right now. His name's Darn Dirty Donnie, and I think is that a saying? Uh, I, I think I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like this. 
<laughs> Trademark. <laughs> Hotter than big guys, grease. You guys are $72. <laughs> All right. But, um, and I, but and also his vibe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His vibe goes so cool. Oh, the, the 70s. Yeah, like, I, mean, uh, I, I think I, Donnie actually has a van like this. Is that right? Yeah, this is Donnie's van. <laughs> and uh, these are Donnie's friends, you know? So, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. Bigfoot and all those guys. Right. But, uh, no, he did a really cool job with it. And, uh, you know, the, the PBR guys came up with the name Can Crusher. And so Donnie's like, oh, cool, I'll just crush a bunch of guys. I think this part here, although it's so simple, is one of my favorite parts of the art. Right. And all it's crush. all under the apron, too, so it's, like, hard to see. And, right, and right. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just, just fun. Yeah. Just the execution's fun. awesome. Yeah, so, and then Donnie also did our new Aerosmith game that's coming out. Um, so, so you did, did you announce that game? Uh, no, we haven't announced that game yet. Oh, <laughs> but it's in his book, right? That's it what I was getting at before. Book. It is in the book. <laughs> these are definitely PBRs here, you guys can tell from the underside. Yeah. Oh, another thing that's really... Oh, so these are the pop-uppers? What is that? No. What is Guys, this? another thing we reinvented. Rollover oh, the roll switches. Oh, the starred little roller right? things. So remember how they used to work? It just it just used to be an insert on the top of the game, and then this device would go. Well, the problem with that inherently was that the clear coat would get, um, you know, and it'd be hard to repair. Was it hitting like a leaf switch or something underneath, or yeah, you know, something again, like that? Again, Whatever. Okay. I know. Again. I know. I no so idea. this is like a micro switch now, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so this whole device now. Is the insert right. and the and the switch oh. all in, all in one? So George and his team again reinvented the wheel. So is this a part we might see in other games now? Yeah, the we, newer? we have seen it. We've seen oh. it in um, I think we saw it in Walking Dead. Oh, is that right? It's on the, yep. It's in the oh, trail. am I right? Yeah. Yep. Mm. We've seen Walking Dead. So yeah, we will see this again. It's it's a it's just smart. It's taking something old from pinball, and making it new again. Right. Um, so again, those work really well on Ellie. Uh, you guys remember we saw the sub assemblies? So they're yep. just pulling sub assemblies from here. They don't have to leave their station to go look for parts. Hey, Ms. And they're just kind of showing up just in time as they need them? Yeah. As she QC's or else, them. Or else he has to go home. Right. <laughs> right? And that's no fun, right? Nope. <laughs> so again, you see sub assemblies there. There was drop target sub yep. assemblies. Uh, yeah, right here. Oh my goodness. Hi, guys. Hi. Okay. So here they're soldering the, the harness. Here they're soldering here, so the that's they got the yeah. hood, so they don't get, they don't die fast. And, uh, fast. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, again, real labor intensive. They're soldering in a lot of, a lot of stuff that they're soldering is to the LED boards and a lot of switches and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But and again, we tried to make a lot of things plug and play. So if right. you look, at, look at the uh, node boards. But yeah. certain stuff just needs to be certain soldered. Certain needs to be soldered in like that. Yeah. All our games are LED now. We don't use incandescent bulbs anymore, so this will be very common to see in all of our games. Right. And this will last forever. It's supposed to. Last yeah. longer than me and you. <laughs> um, uh, these are all these are all for testing. Yeah. So these have been these have run down the assembly line. You can see oh. our testing area got backed up. <laughs> um, hey guys. So when they flip it back over. Now they're gonna decorate it. So we're gonna put uh, plastics. Um, if there were ramps on this game, we would put ramps. Mm -hmm. If there were molded toys, we would put them. Um, what do you think, Greg? Like this that. PBR game is it's sick, nice, right? Man. It's so cool it's awesome. to look at. Right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's actually really fun too. It, what's interesting is when you take a game that was already a game, one yeah. right? And it has a, well, a personality, right? It's, it's, got, uh, it's got cool speech, it's got uh, fun hillbilly music, and it's got cool art. And in Immersion in the World, when we changed it to this art and new music by Red Fang, they're kind of a stoner rock band, and then new speech, so it was a whole different experience. Right. Yeah. And it's just really fun to do. Um, so assets are really important for pinball, I think, a lot of times. Yeah. So this is kind of the end of the demo, and these are, gonna, these are all going to get uh, ready for testing. You see all these games here are ready for testing, a lot of Metallica Premium, a lot of Ghostbusters. How many years have you, have you been making Metallica? Metallica... Now? Three or four years? Three or four. Yeah. How long does it usually take for one to get all the way down? All the way through. So about 30, 30 hours, about four working days. Yeah. Um, and then as far as designing a game, it can take up to a year. Some people take longer, some people take less. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're doing, this part of the time of year, we're doing like 60 or 70. We do about 50 or 55. Okay. But you know, the holidays. Um, one, we got to get a lot of export orders out because uh, Europe will shut down pretty soon. You know, and China, all the, all the places, Far East, they'll shut down for holidays and so they, Right, uh, Chinese New Year. Yeah. China might already be shut down. Uh, so here's here's the testing facility. Hey, George. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Good. 
Yeah, you see that guy we got from the club? Oh, the, uh, the MVP? See that? Yeah. Uh, Arizona Fall League MVP? The Yankees, yeah. Okay. 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 We're going to get Chapman back, too. So you can see what we're doing is he's test. He's got this on this rotisserie. You guys see the rotisserie here. If you had to work on a pinball machine, you probably want one of these. Because it flips the game around like right, that. Right, right. And then you don't Very have to slick. lift it up. And you know, <laughs> so he's on this, and uh, right now he's got it in game mode. So he's just making. He's probably seen Metallica a million times, so he knows that everything that's supposed to happen. But if you see something that's not supposed to happen, he can go through and do the diagnostics. So he'll test all the switches, all the coils, all the lights. Make sure that everything works properly before it leaves. Uh, before it leaves the station. And then, and, and then after in. this step right here, does it go in the cabinet and then that's it? No, it goes in the cabinet and we do a lot more stuff. Uh, more testing with more the testing. with the actual board that's for the game, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, but this is literally on the way out the door, right? Almost. So like. Oh yeah. So we're gonna go in here. Yep. And then it's gonna go to my man over here. These guys here yeah. are the top of the line techs in the factory. Right. They've worked here the longest. They know. This is the job they have. This is the job they have. And they get to play. And, well, they get to play. <laughs> they, I think they probably would rather go home and not play pinball, though, right? You must be sick of pinball. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and again, so he's playing right now. He's play testing. You can see over here, he's. Uh, he's fine tuning over here. Yeah. I'd like to see some. So these are just like final little tweaks and adjustments. Final little tweaks you can see here. He's going, he's going through the light matrix, right? Yeah. And as he's going through, he can see if ever, make sure everything's working. So we're, he's going to do all those tests that that guy did again. Again. Because now it's all together. This all is together. it. Because after this, it goes in a box, right? After this, it goes in a box, and then, you know, it better be right. And um, so they do a really good job. I mean, you know, high percentage of the games that go out of here are flawless. Um, when we come over here, there's someone that'll come by. Remember these tags that we saw on the inside? Mm -hmm. QC tags? QC tags. So at, at some point, this is going to get filled out. Yeah. One of these guys is going to be responsible for it. Their supervisor will will sign off on it. They'll get an OK. And this tag. goes with the game? This goes. Well, this stays with us. Oh, it does. OK, because I, I noticed the notes on the back. So Yeah, but the top of the tag. Would stay in, in the game. Stays in the game. So I see. It should be stapled in there somewhere. OK. And so, actually, it's. It's this part here. We'll get stapled. Hey, I have a question. Yep. What, do you know what this is? What is? Because I know it's on my ghost quest. Another <laughs> well, no, what does that do? Is that a grounding one? Is that a grounding? Thing? What is this? Oh, it's for the cabinet. It's oh, it's for the cabinet? Yeah. Oh, it's for, for the... The play field won't move. You know? Oh, so the play field won't move? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's what that does. It stabilizes it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> he would know better than me. <laughs> So the cabinet hits that. that. Oh, uh, okay. Keeps it from moving side so I was looking at it, I was like, what does it, that it do? Fills, it fills the space. I see. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so anyway, this top of the tag yep. stays here. So like, say you call me, you say, Jody, I got a problem with you my game. You can pull the bottom half four, four, off. Four, four, two, two, eight, four. I go, we go back into a tag. Say like, say there was a guy named Jody who worked here. Yeah. And every game Jody worked on. Uh, we, yeah. Jody, he, we had a talk. Yeah, he's right. hung over. Can't work here. <laughs> Can't work here anymore. <laughs> and um, anyway, so keep people in the balance check. Uh, you know, uh, check the balance of the system. Here, the game gets prepped up. You can see there's a, there's a bunch of back glasses here. So the, you'll see there's a little back glass assembly line here. Put it all together, get everything ready. Boom, this one says okay to pack. So we can assume it's okay to pack. I don't know, where's it going, let's see. It's going to the USA, so some guy's getting a brand new Metallica pre uh, premium here. Oop. Without a QC tag. <laughs> um, and then so they do a couple little things. Fell off again. Yeah. Here's uh, before we stop and talk to some designers. I don't know if you guys have been in the parts department. Yeah, this is where you get the toppers and all yeah, that, right? And uh, <laughs> so this is Hi. Angel. Hi. Everything that's ever been shipped out of this building has been shipped by Angel. <laughs> uh, so it's true. He does a really good job at it. Um, so as we're going through here, so this is Angel's little shipping area. But as we come back here, we see. We have parts for our game dating back almost you know a decade. So what's really important for us is is keeping our distributors and parts suppliers mm. um, filled with things that that they can't get from anywhere so else. So someone can call and say we need this for a Simpsons pinball party, and right. you, you'll have it here. Yeah, or I need a zombie for Walking Dead. Right. Right. Where are you going to get that right, particular exactly. zombie? Or mm. my favorite one is the. There's like a there's a bin here of left arms for the Hulk. <laughs> it's like where are you gonna get that? A left arm. Never. You're not gonna get that anywhere. <laughs> so um, again, and, and and it could be as mundane as 
you right. know, a, a, a target. Um, but do you go over. back to the beginning with these parts or is it um, just... Well, so what, what the deal is, so after we manufacture a game, yeah. we'll make the parts or replacement parts. We'll, we have the right to make them for about another decade after the license is up. Okay. After that period, when, the, when it's almost all done, yeah. we'll say, all right, um, final call. And we'll tell, call the distributor and say, what do you want? And then they'll probably order another t 10 years worth of parts. No kidding. After that, hopefully the 3D printers get real cheap. <laughs> right? So again, all sorts of stuff back here for all Pieces and games. parts and... More plastic stuff over here. You can see back here is uh, a bunch of toys from different things. Uh, your, you know, your Doc Ock from the original Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, this is your Lonnie Rop bobblehead from Wheel of Fortune. Oh, no kidding. So you do keep some of the older stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know. You know I love family this. Family guy. Is this Vanna? Who is this? <laughs> oh, this is a contestant? Yeah. Fat bastard. Remember we made uh, Austin Powers? Oh, yeah. Powers. Austin Powers. Uh, War Machine. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of fun stuff. And then when, when people call and ask for translates, they come to me. You guys want to translate? Even at South Park. Oh, yeah. You guys want any translites? <laughs> That's over here. <laughs> I'm serious. Sure. Anything? What do you mm -hmm. Something fun. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune? No, I want Space Jam. Oh, dude. That's cool. <laughs> I hope there's something. In there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. You know, it was the 20th anniversary of Space Jam, or 30th anniversary. Was it really? Just, just like the other day, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. You know, my friend, I'll get you guys tubes and stuff. To awesome, keep thanks, man. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Wow, yeah. it's classic, classic it's screen, right? Come on, awesome. it's Jordan. Anybody else? MJ. Come on, Greg. Next, Greg. Greg. Tron. 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 Yeah. Tron. Yeah. Tron. <laughs> yeah, wait, do you guys see it though? Uh, Let's see. Uh, Here's Tron right here. You see Tron? Yeah. All right. Oh, oh it's kind of light. Thanks, Jody. It's kind of like... <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> <laughs> Is this the last one? Oh. There you go. Wow. I'm going to have to get the printing press hooked up again. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. All right. John is out. I'll leave this here. I'll get this thing over here. Do you have any Ghostbusters Limited? <laughs> no no, no posse. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? What? All right. He's oh, a I'm liability. Sorry. Sorry. All right, anybody else? Yeah. I got it. How about Iron Man? Uh, Speak now. How about Iron Man? Iron Man? Did you see it? How about Star Trek? What was I showing? So this is your office. This is my office. Oh, dude, I like the Arch Rivals. You Ed filming Mark? from the Bare Naked Ladies actually gave me that. Is that right? Yeah. That's a nice little movie. So let's see. You guys wanted to see. Are you filming Mark? I am. All right. So, so we're in fine. Jody's office, by the way. This is uh, the Dirty, Do Dirty Donnie art book that had the Aerosmith in it, right? That's what we thought. It's, it's, it had it in there. Let's see what's still in there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it had it? Well, that's what you said. It had it in there. <laughs> let's see. So here we go. This is a book about his art. just came out. Oh, a lot here, of pinball here's stuff. The pinball section here. Let's see. Here. A lot of pinball stuff. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at you, Jody. You did the forward. <laughs> I had a Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this? He did that. He did the helicopters, one-off machine. I, I don't know. That's kind of neat. I think he might have made that for the guy. Yeah, he. He made that. He might have made that for the guys in Metallica. I know he made this one for James Hatfield and Metallica. This is actually here. You guys can see that's Tanya Kleiss. He actually works for us now. Is that right? Yeah. So Tanya actually worked on that hmm. first Metallica machine that was uh, that was Donnie had made for Metallica. Yeah, that's right. Was it was it like a whirlwind or something um, or Earth Shaker or something that was Earth reskin? Shaker, yeah, yeah. Earth it's Earth Shaker. I can see. Yeah. Earth Shaker. Yeah. And then that was the original translate for it and stuff. So kind of kind of the precursor to what we did, right? Right. Uh, which is kind of neat. And then here's obviously uh, our Metallica. And then this is actually Donnie's me personal Metallica. He has like, he did his own custom decals and armor. You can tell it's a little bit different than, mm -hmm. than a normal. Metallica. It's kind of airbrushed legs in mm -hmm. here and stuff. And the color of the cabinet's different. I think he added a big skull here, um, which is in the, in the front, which is different than you can see here. Mm -hmm. These are the production models. 
It's a premium back glass. Oh, here's the part where you, I remember that was, that's, he tells a story about Sparky. Right. About how he was born. So again, you know, he was just a picture like that. Metallica uh, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, oh. so here is, is some sneak peek at the Aerosmith stuff. So this isn't top secret, it's out there. And that has that same color changing, uh, maybe? Who knows? This has, <laughs> actually, this is the same as Batman. Oh, it is, uh, as Batman. Full color. Uh, not the yeah. same as that Spider-Man that's not out the there. Not the same as that Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay. And uh, here you can see the picture of the back of him. His style is great. It just works with rock and roll on every, on every really, level. Yeah, it's fun. And you know, mm -hmm. it's got this cool, like, 70s rock vibe to it. And, and er, er, when I think Aerosmith, I think of the cool late 70s and the, yep. and the cool hits. And we really had some really great um, tracks. Um, you know, Toys in the Attic, Rats in the Cellar. That's so are these cool licensing deals pretty tough with the music? Well, they can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is there certain songs that you can't have or yeah, they absolutely. play that? You yeah, know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, some things, a lot of times older stuff, the rights are sometimes are spread out between lots of people yeah. or something. It's, it sometimes it becomes a logistical nightmare. Mm -hmm. but, you know, in general, we, we have a lot of fun with yeah. it. Yeah. So I like your arch rivals. This is a like defender cabinet, would you say? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a little like off here. Yeah, yeah. We can off. fix that right now if you want. It's, it's okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny. So I wheeled it in here last week when no one was around. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys could. Yeah. And then uh, Lyman was walking by, Lyman Sheets. Yeah. And he's like, oh, cool. You got an R-Trials? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but I plugged it in. Nothing happens, right? So he opened up the back Interlock. here. And then looking in the back of here was fascinating. Yeah. Um, and so he, uh, he plugged in a couple circuit boards. We, did, we found a dead rat. Um, <laughs> and then uh, and then it turned on. And then we That's have, great. We've been playing for beers. So now. what's the story with this? Where did this come uh, from? Well, uh, we were at the Pinball Expo in Chicago at the banquet. Yeah. And there was... I wasn't paying attention, but apparently there was a an old Knight Rider pinball machine, you know, the one with the trucker. Yeah, yeah, it. absolutely. And and this was like a lot to buy. Mm -hmm. And so Ed Robertson from the Bare Naked Ladies was with us, and he's like, oh. He's a big pin guy. He, yeah, he's a huge pinball. Yeah. And, and so he bought the Knight Rider, and but it came with this. And so I, I jokingly said, oh, thanks for getting me the arch right. <laughs> I was like, you want it? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> because when I was like 11 or right, 12, right. man, a lot of allowance went into this thing, so. Um, it's kind of it's kind of cool. I mean, it's totally cool. It's just a and it's designed it's by the guy that did the uh, Rampage and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's totally got that whole style to yeah. it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then um, what's fun is a lot of the guys from PD keep walking by, like Dwight Sullivan or yeah. Steve Rich. Like I know the guys who made that. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Like in the, they're like, I was at Williams and yeah. I was at. I'm surprised Bally Steve wasn't like the voice of something. Well, in it. you know. He, <laughs> I'm surprised, I'm surprised someone didn't steal the design from Steve. <laughs> right. Oh, is that? <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. You know, I want to ask you about what? that Pac-Man LED desk clock. So I've been seeing that on Amazon. Dude, you're, that's like you're going to raw. We're going thrills. to raw thrills. Tell so you got one of those. One. I know. We got to get that. Tell him to give you one. It's like one of my <laughs> most favorite things. Uh, is it? Every, every once in a while, Pac-Man goes by. Yeah. Because yeah. raw oh, thrills is making that. Goes. We're gonna be going yeah, to the source. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I and that's a commercial product they made with for for I mean consumer yeah, it's, product. It's a consumer you, product. It's like, yeah, it's their, I think it's their first consumer product. So I have you guys ever thought about doing some little miniature pinball toy for kids? It'd be kind of fun. You got one right there. <laughs> <laughs> something like that for your desk. Oh, oh that's wow. cool. Right. <laughs> nice. Speak of the devil. No kidding. Yeah. It just yeah. showed up while you guys were here. <laughs> Oh, look at that. So, yeah, so, right? That'd be cool for the desk, right? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Put in your game room or there you whatever. Go. Ghostbusters pinball. All right, when I get some little So what? what is that exactly? Is that just a little desk toy? It's a little, like, kind of like a, a little topper? LED. It's oh. less of a topper and more of a desk desk thing. Yeah, but maybe, maybe we'll uh, put that on the Stern Shop. I think so. Yeah. Right? That'd be cool. Yeah, so we have thought about it. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, even, like, you know that topper you saw, the Walking Dead topper? Yeah. We've made a standalone version of that. I was gonna say fans probably just bought. We don't have a pinball machine. Yeah, we just gotta figure out a way, you know. Yeah. Sell it. Put it on Amazon. Yeah, maybe, but like it's it's. There's a lot of these things that could be toys. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. But you'll have to ask. Um, you'll have to ask the guys at Roth Thrills when you're there the story on this. But from what I understand is, it started out as the. I don't know if you've seen the, the one in Dave and Buster's. The Pac they did Man. the giant Pac-Man yeah, with the color-changing LEDs. And there's another. Yeah, and there's mm -hmm. one of the Pac-Mans that has like this cool topper on it. Yeah. And so. The, I think some of the designers or somebody made one as a gift for somebody. Is that right? And then they were like, we should make these for yeah. real. And they did. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, it's awesome. And yeah, it comes in like this nice box. I think it was more expensive than it is now. I think at first it was like 80 bucks. It was, yeah. And They're like 40 now. now. 40 bucks yeah. Like that, which is cool. They're selling a lot. They're making more economy of scale. 
So. That's fun, yeah. And uh, this is all the stuff my wife won't let me take home because <laughs> I have too much stuff at home. So. <laughs> oh, do you guys want some some cool shirts from our Batman launch? Sure. sure. What yeah. um, size are you guys? All sorts of shirts. Portly XL. Portly XL. That's me. Yeah, Portly XL. All right, you're a henchman. All right, cool. All right, guys, we're done. So Jody. Oh, thank thanks, you. pal. Thanks for having. Me. Thanks, this is awesome. Thanks for having. Truly mean it. Thanks for taking the time. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go back to. Are we gonna eat now? No, we got <laughs> to the schedule. We'll eat later. All right, we might go to the Billy Goat Tavern right now. I'm we'll not sure. We'll it. talk about it. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Stern was awesome. It was intense. It was so good. I love that place. I love those guys. I love the games. Yeah. I, I think they're top-notch, guys, it's a honestly. side from the previous year, so it's <laughs> exactly. great. Exactly. So I hope you guys enjoyed the Stern video. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Of course, check out his channel. Arcade Impossible. That's right. It's Thanks. not... It's not impossible. It's not impossible. Hashtag John's That's Arcade right. Impossible. <laughs> so, all right, guys, we'll see you very soon. Be sure to check out my t-shirt campaign at johnsarcadeshirt.com. That's it. We'll see you very soon. Later, and bye. John's